Hi, everybody. I'm Todd McKim, and welcome to CalBears.com, along with head coach Mike Montgomery. Uh, interesting weekend, to say the least, down in the state of Arizona. As, uh, Arizona State was first, and that was one where the team just did not get off to a good start, made a great comeback, but couldn't get over the hump, and yet came back a couple of days later against Arizona, played very well in that basketball game, and for the second time in eight days, you get a win over a top-10 team. Yeah, you know, and the thing about kids is I'm not sure that we probably have the energy against Arizona if we don't lose to Arizona State. You know, you get, let's say you got the Arizona State game and then you're kind of thinking, hey, you know, you go in, you don't have that same sense of urgency maybe. It's just the nature, unless you're really, really good, unless you're just better than everybody. And, you know, certainly that hasn't been our case this year, but uh, we did have a sense of urgency on Sunday. We had an extra day to prepare. Uh, or at least get over the Thursday thing and get off our feet a little bit, prepare on uh, Saturday, and then come back and play on Sunday at 5 o'clock. But uh, a split on that trip's pretty good. I, we were concerned, uh, both teams up near the top. Uh, Arizona had lost two games all season. Uh, Arizona State only four. So we were playing against good teams. But it also sort of pointed out that if we'll defend we can play with anybody now obviously against Arizona the the zone was the key for us there I think more so because Arizona just got a little standy and didn't didn't attack it like they would have liked and that bought us time and maybe rested us a little bit from the standpoint of having to chase a Solomon Hill round but even against Arizona State uh, the breakdowns that we had defensively ended up costing us Gordon uh, ended up having uh, uh, a really good game against us and not not what we'd expected from him. We worked real hard on Jahidi Carson, uh, who was uh, averaging over 19 points a game, uh, you know, and then Bajinski inside. We tried to take him out, and yet it was Batif off the bench that hurt us with 12. So, uh, you know, when we do what we're capable of for 40 minutes, which we haven't done all that often, but when we do, if we stay focused, we're, we're not bad. Well, the guy that was... Um uh, struggled a little bit, really took that Thursday night loss very hard was Alan Crabb. He, he struggled with it after the game, you could tell. And he came back on Sunday and had one of the best games that anybody's had in the conference this year. And for his efforts, was named the Pac-12 Conference Player of the Week. Yeah, I mean, Alan has got so much responsibility, mostly at scoring. Uh, but, you know, he has a, a responsibility at the defensive end as well because being 6'6", you know, we either go small uh, er, or we go big. And, and so there's a lot of guys that he has to guard that in that six five six 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 seven range. And, uh, it, you know, he's, he played 40 minutes on Thursday night, and that's hard to try to carry the load uh, offensively, particularly the way people are playing him. They're face guarding him. They're chesting him. They're holding him. They're not letting him get to his cuts. They're putting their best athlete on him, figuring it's worth it if they'll take a guy out, if they can take – take Allen out uh, offensively for us. So that's a lot of pressure. He made a couple mistakes late in the game uh, that, that really bothered him. And, uh, you know, had we made another basket or two and we were really scoring fairly consistently at that point, you know, could have been a different outcome. But uh, Allen loves the game. He's very conscientious. Uh, he's all about winning, really. Uh, he knows he has to score. Uh, I think he actually relishes that responsibility, but it's not easy. It's not like he can take a night off. So he had a fabulous game. I mean, he was at the top of the zone. His size caused them problems. They tried to isolate him a lot, uh, and he you know, was man enough to ha handle the challenge. Uh, you know, if had he had to play against Solomon Hill for 40 minutes, I thought it would have been very difficult for him because Solomon's physical and uh, kind of a go-to guy. So that, that, I think that really helped Allen. But doesn't mean still that you go 12 for 15 from the floor, seven rebounds, five assists. Really a complete game. Yeah, he had a complete game. This week the Bears will take on the uh, UCLA Bruins and the USC Trojans. And a guy that's going to have to step up and play against some of the bigs for both of those teams is Robert Thurman. Recently, we had a chance to sit down and talk to him and get his thoughts about how the season has gone and what his future is in store as well. You know you have arrived when you get a nickname. Thurman with a rebound and the putback. Robert Thurman has come a long ways from his high school days in North Edwards, California. At 6'10", 270, you would think he was on everybody's watch list. Absolutely not. Um, at high school, you know, I was maybe 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, 
215, 210. And then after my senior year, I sprung up another three inches, put on maybe 20 pounds, it was almost like 230, and I, don't, I didn't get to recruit to any schools. After a term at a junior college, Thurman headed east to Norwich University in central Vermont, a military school that was night and day from his roots. You know, I'm from California, never seen snow before. I walk outside and I open the door and there's snow piled up on each side of the walkway that's higher than the door, but the pathways are all cleared because, you know, they're used to it. Never had a snow day once, there'd be a blizzard out. I have no idea what I'm supposed to do. It was, it was enough for me. I, I actually had a teammate who got like frostbite on his fingertips, so he couldn't play a few games, yeah. Time to come back to California and when given the opportunity to walk on with the Bears, you know the old saying, right place, the right time. It's absolutely what it was, you know. I was a 6'10 guy they didn't have to pay, do anything with. All I had to do was, you know, bang around with Jamal Boykin and Max Sang. When one practice, I'd bang around too much with him, <laughs> collapse his lung. But, uh, yeah, it's, but that's what I was. And I was just, you know, just a practice player at the time. The big guy went to work, cutting his body, getting into shape, and becoming the BMOTC big man on the court. You know, I used to love playing, you know, against Josh Smith because that was just, you know, the game that I, I liked to play against because he was a guy who was just as big as me. You know, Aziz this year, he took the better half of me this year, but you know, like last year, I had a great game against him because he was just like a big, I like having that, that aspect of it. And I think sometimes it's my disadvantage, but I like having the, the, you know, the advantage on being able to just like push people around. But Thurman has become more than just muscle for the Bears. With that power also comes a little jump hook. And suddenly the former walk-on is a regular on everybody's scouting report. They always say whenever I'm in the game, I, I, it's probably, that probably happens every single game I've been there, that don't let them get deep touches. Because I'll bury a guy and I'll, I'll be right underneath the rim. And they, they don't obviously don't like that because you don't want someone to have a point-blank shot. From an afterthought to contributor, Robert Thurman has been one of the feel-good stories for Cal basketball. Thurman Nation! So Robert's a, a guy that, and you've said this before, he kind of gives you everything he has. I mean, he's, he came in, he transferred from Norwich, and uh, has come in and uh, reworked his body. He's worked hard, and he's done a really good job for you most of the season. Yeah, now Norwich, people are going to think he's from England or something, <laughs> but that's Norwich Academy in uh, Connecticut. Uh, yeah, he really has. I mean, Robert is uh, came from a Division three school. He wanted more, uh, came to us, and we kind of looked at him. He's obviously a big kid, but did not really have the skill level that he needed to play. To his credit, we tried to show him how to shoot a jump hook and what we wanted him to do, and you'd hear balls bouncing in the gym, and he'd be in here working. And uh, he's very conscientious. Uh, you know, he likes... Uh, he, he just wants to win. Uh, he'll do whatever you ask the best of his ability. Uh, it's not from lack of trying when something doesn't go the way he'd like it to go. Uh, he's, uh, he's had some really good games for us. You know, he's best when he's catching drop offs and finishing because he is really strong. He's had some really good games for us. I mean, uh, I can't imagine really what we would be doing without Robert, to be honest with you. He's the first guy off the bench, and there have been times when we've looked and said, you know, maybe Robert deserves to start, uh, but I think then the nervous part of that <laughs> gets to him a little bit, and he's probably better wh right where he is. And not every matchup works for Robert. There are t some times where the matchups are not conducive to what he does, and maybe we feel like we're giving up a little more than we'd like to, for what we're getting back with his size. But uh, it's not, again, it's not ever from lack of wanting to do the right thing and try to help the team win. And from that standpoint, you know, oddly enough, from where he's come from, I think Robert could go to Europe someplace and make some money. Uh, and, you know, which, of course, every kid really would like to do. Uh, but he, he brings a skill set, and he's a big, strong dude. He certainly is. And uh, you're going to face a couple of big, strong dudes this week, certainly when you see USC. But you've got UCLA. USC, both of these teams are playing very well right now. UCLA coming off a nice weekend, uh, a game that uh, kind of got away from the Bears down to Poly Pavilion. And then USC is same personnel, but th they seem to be a, a different basketball team since they made the coaching change. Well, I think when in SC what, what you've got is a team that Kevin ran a pretty tight ship. I know that going into the season, they really felt like they were going to contend. Uh, they, they had a lot of new players, people they really liked, they were very high on. 
And uh, but as I say, Kevin ran a pretty tight ship, and uh, things didn't work out for him. So when uh, Bob Cantu then was appointed interim coach, he just uh, said, "Hey, okay, guys, look, we're going to get up and down. We're going to shoot shots. We're not going to worry. You know, if you can't, you don't make it, that's, you know, that's okay." And so some of the kids who are very talented now are are playing fairly loose. Uh, JT. Terrell, I think, is the number one guy that's they liked all along, but against us didn't even play down there. So since that time, they've actually played very, very good basketball. They swept at home the Washingtons. They beat UCLA at UCLA, which was a huge win for them. So it's been going pretty well for them. I'm not sure they're not playing about as well as anybody in the league right now. UCLA, obviously, very talented. Uh, you know, Shabazz Muhammad is a guy that everybody focuses on. But they've got a lot of other people. I mean, Travis Ware's having a great year. He's the one that really hurt us down at their place. We just didn't have an answer for him. He kept stepping off and hitting jump shots. Kyle Anderson uh, is an odd sort of a player in that he's a 6'9 passing guard. Uh, but he plays a four, takes it out of bounds, comes in trail post, uh, passes the ball. Uh, he, he's he's a very clever player. So, And then Jordan Adams. I mean, they got a lot of guys, I and mean, there's no question. Now, they only have eight. And uh, Parker's limited mis minutes off the bench, their, their eighth guy, which would be a big. Uh, so they're really playing seven guys. And uh, they got in a little bit of trouble when Travis Ware got a concussion and didn't have him. And his brother David, they're identical twins, but David just doesn't seem to be quite the same as Travis. Uh, and they lost a game, but uh, very talented basketball team, no question about it. Uh -huh.